Hey everyone, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting channel. This channel focuses on knitting, crocheting, and other yarn related topics. I am Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter, coming to you from sunny city of Phoenix, Arizona. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting family. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I am so excited to have everybody here today. Uh, so if you guys notice, there's a little bit of change in scenery. I decided to film outside because it's a gorgeous day. It's not too hot, not too cold, it's fantastic. So if the light changes throughout, I do apologize, but I just thought it would be kind of nice to give a change of pace. Um, so there's that. If you guys are ever looking for any show notes or anything in any of my videos that you guys are watching, go ahead and check out the description box below. That's where everything is going to be, including names of patterns, designers, and yarns if I know them. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. Uh, because I am outside today, if you hear some extra noises or dogs barking or something like that, or JD comes and wanders behind me, don't be surprised because, again, it's his backyard. <laughs> He's currently over here sniffing at something, and I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's kind of funny. Um, so I'm so excited to have everybody here today. I decided I don't know what we're going to do. I think I'm going to... Yes. What? Yes, you're being curious, I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. So today I've got a couple of finished objects to show you, or projects to show you. I have a uh, work in progress to show you and an update on another one. And um, just a little bit of what's been going on with me and things like that, just to kind of, you know, satisfy some curiosity. There was a couple of questions I was actually asked to answer that were sent to me via Ravelry, which again, check out the link below or check out the name below if you guys are curious. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so let's go ahead and first jump into some finished projects. So the first and foremost, I know you guys have seen this many, many times, but now it's actually officially finished. Um, I'm not wearing it today because it's a little chilly outside. Well, okay, chilly for me. Um, is not chilly for the rest of the world. <laughs> um, chilly for me is like 65. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, right now it's gorgeous. Oh, before we forget, I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Back up just a smidge. Awesome. Um, what am I wearing knit wise today? I am actually still wearing the same hat I was wearing last time. And, uh, I call it the Kakano hats. Check out the screen, it'll give you guys the pattern designer. It is made by, Co it's made out of Kobasi Plus, and it's a worsted weight yarn. I love it because it can be thrown in the washing machine. Um, I've done it several times. Wash it, dry it, perfect, great for kids. If you guys want that little bit nicer yarn, or just an adult that you wanna give them something nicer, but you still don't wanna have to worry about washing it, this is the yarn for you. Um, it's not quite as warm as, you know, a wool is, so just be, be aware of that. Um, and it has a little different texture to it, which is really kind of nice, so it's perfect for what I use it for. Um, this is, I call this my second favorite hat, not because of the pattern or anything like that, it's just my favorite hat was woven for me by a friend. Um, so this is my second favorite hat, it gets worn a lot because it's gray and it goes with just about everything. So. Mm, love my hat. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm wearing. <laughs> so now on to finished projects. So I have officially finally finished. Oh, there's the collar there. This is, wee. This is the Convergence by Yumiko Alexander. And I love it. So I did not, I don't know if you guys can see in here. So there is a horizontal rib as well as a vertical rib in this pattern. Now the front is supposed to be a little bit shorter than the back, at least the way the pattern is designed. I did not do that. I wanted mine to be one length. I didn't want the split hem thing. I didn't want to worry about it. Um, the other thing, there's supposed to be a little bit more arm shaping than what I did. I just bound off five stitches and did the arm length to the length I wanted. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger than my actual arm. It's actually gonna be a lot bigger than my actual arm. Um, that is the only thing I would probably, if I did this pattern again, I would change it still. I wouldn't put my armhole, I would actually like shorten or reduce the length of my armhole. I didn't do the armhole to my size. I did the math, I'm like, okay, if this armhole is that big, according to the pattern, <laughs> it would be down almost to my waist. I didn't want my armhole quite that large. 
Um, so I did change where the armhole started and stopped um, or started in my pattern. If I did it again, or if I knit this pattern again, I would actually shorten it a couple more inches, to be honest with you. Um, it's designed to be an oversized. It's designed to have the big armholes. However, I wouldn't want them that large. Um, so I've kind of noticed sometimes with Yumiko's patterns, not all aspects of the pattern size correctly or size evenly, I should say. So what works for a size small arm, she then took it and just, you know, increased it until you got to the big arms. Well, if you do that, your armholes wind up again down at your waist. Um, so I would have shortened some of that stuff just to keep it like normal, I guess. Um, but again, I love this. It looks really great. It's actually a tunic length um, by the time I get done. If you do the split hem, it comes a little bit shorter. But on me, this one becomes a tunic length. And I love it because it's longer. Um, if you guys want a slightly shorter or you have a shorter torso, you guys can go ahead and you guys don't want to do the split hem thing. Knit the front and the back the same way because that's what I did. <laughs> I didn't do anything different from the front and the back. I didn't do the split hem thing, as I said. Um, and it'll make it like 20 rows shorter. If you guys have a little bit shorter of a torso or you want a little bit shorter of a garment, it's perfect. That's the way to do it. It's great. I knit this out of 100% bamboo by Southwest Trading Company. Um, Southwest Trading Company is no longer in business, apparently. Found that out. <laughs> uh, so, but 100% bamboo is what I knit it out of. It's not what the pattern calls for. Pattern calls for Dondo yarn, and I forgot. I think it's a silk cotton linen blend that she used. I really, really like the way that the stitch definition shows up in this 100% bamboo um i partially i knit it out of this because again i live in phoenix arizona i live in a desert and it gets very very warm here during the summer so i can toss on like a a layering tank underneath this and it'd be perfect um during the winter if i ever get something that's long sleeved that's like a gray or a black or a white shirt i can toss it on toss this on top of it and just kind of go and it's not going to be too heavy for me to wear um you make this, I would do it out of something that's a little more drapey because that's the way the shirt is designed is to be a little drapier. Um, so I'm super excited about this. I told you guys I had somebody that was quite good at seaming and that is my seam. So it turned, the seam turned out really, really well. I'll get a little bit closer for you guys. Hope that actually shows up. There it goes. That's about as good as I can get in the light. Um, she helped me with my seaming and it reinforced the seam. So with bamboo, especially, you can have a problem of, or you know, bamboo, certain silks, um, certain linens, things like that, your seams can pull or stretch further than the rest of your garment. And the seaming technique that she gave me, it looks perfect. So I really, really enjoyed that. Again, the pattern is Yumiko Alexander's Convergence. I really enjoyed it. There is a strong chance that I will probably knit it again in the future, maybe not the immediate future, but probably knit it again in the future and possibly a different color, which would be really cool. So really excited about that. That is all done. Um, my second completed object is actually just a little baby hat. And unfortunately, I don't know what the colorway is for this anymore. If I find it, I'll put it in the description box below but it's a little baby hat. This is just a basic baby hat. I don't even know who the pattern is by. I don't even know if I used a pattern to be completely honest with you. Um, I did about two inches of rib at the bottom and then I just did a basic hat. I think I cast on 60 stitches, 70 stitches. Um, and I did it with a size three US. So I think it's like a 1.5 or two millimeter needle. I'll put that down in the description box below, maybe across the screen too. <laughs> um, so it is made out of yarn pirates yarn, fingering weight sock yarn. Uh, so it's superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. So great for a baby. Toss it in the washing machine. It's all good. Um, it's got a nice stretch to it, which is nice. 
I don't know if you guys, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Put it up here, it got a little weird for me. Um, so nice stretch to it. A uh, friend of mine is actually having a baby and it's a baby girl. So I was like, oh, I'll make you a little hat. So um, I don't remember the colorway either. If I, again, if I can find it, I'll stick it down in the description box below. I really liked the yarn. I really like yarn pyre. I like the colors in it. I liked it because it wasn't just a standard pink girl yarn. It has yellows and greens and light greens and light pink and you can really go boy or girl with this. So I need to block it still. You guys can definitely tell where my, uh, ooh, there we go, um, <laughs> where I did my, my magic loop in here. So when I block that, that'll go away. But doo -doo, there you go. See, all better. No I'm kidding. <laughs> so, but that's my second finished object. It was really cute. It was fun. It was fast. It actually was just using up some scraps. So that was really nice. Um, my third project <laughs> was this really cool hat. And so if you guys remember, oh, I'll get the yarn real quick. Hold on. Don't fall everything. Okay, so I purchased this Taki Vermont, Taki Yarns Vermont from um, when I went to my local yarn store and I did local yarn store day. So I pick, picked it up in this color coffee and the color natural heather, which is the, the cream color is the natural heather. The brown color is the coffee and I picked it up for the purpose of doing basically this exact hat so I'm really excited it took almost one full ball of white well I did take one full ball of white let me phrase that statement if you guys can't tell there's a teeny tiny bit of um, the brown up here at the top of the crown I ran out of one ball of white keep in mind a ball of white is only 50 grams and 50 this comes in a 50 gram ball and 50 grams is the same equivalent of 93 yards or 85 meters um it is a worsted weight it's a hot it's a thick worsted i'd call it a decent worsted weight yarn if not light light bulky um it's 50 percent merino 50 percent super fine alpaca so it's very nice and soft i really really like that um the pattern sorry Gave you guys the yarn before I gave you guys the pattern. So I really liked this. I thought this was gorgeous. The pattern, I'm actually gonna pull it up. Sorry about that. So this pattern is Stronger by Athena Forbes. Again, check out the, um, somewhere in the screen plus the description box below. And really, she actually wrote the pattern three different ways. There is actually a version of it that actually says stronger in here. There is the version, she tells you how to like change it. So she gives you the base pattern for the hat. Then she gives you the pattern for the trees. She gives you the pattern for the mountains. She gives you the pattern for stronger with the mountains. And you can kind of combine them any way you choose. So you can do just the trees you could do sorry jay's starting to lose his shiznit around here for some reason <laughs> yeah because i don't know what in the world's going on with my dog but he's going crazy back here um so sorry as i was saying you can do just the trees just the the uh, mountains or you can do two mountains or a mountains and a trees so I did trees and a mountain I'll probably do another one of these someday soon and I will do the like two mountains on it or something like that um, I think I'm gonna get another ball of white as well um, and then do the bottom ribbing in white and the trees and the mountains in white and the background in and brown and probably use up the rest of what I've got and as my pattern falls on the ground, it's fine. Um, I really did this one to, I did this hat for two purposes. One, I wanted to make pattern because I think it's gorgeous. Two, I really wanted to use this yarn. 
because again it's nice and squishy and I like it <laughs> and three I wanted to get some more practice before with color work again um, before I go and I try to do stockings so this hasn't been blocked yet um, if you guys see it up close my stitches are not the most even in the whole wide world um, and I was trying to you know work on that as well because it's been so long since I've done it but nobody's gonna notice that but me and now you that I pointed it out so um, the only thing I haven't figured out yet is what kind of a pom-pom or what color pom-pom do I want at the top I don't have like I've got one that's this color but to me this is too gray it's not really as brown like if you see it in person I think it's showing up on camera as more brown than it really is um, I don't think it really fits with the rest of the hat and the other color I've got right now is this white with speckles in it um, but again it's not a cream it's a true more like a snow white with speckles so I think I need to go find one with cream in it and use that one instead so it's kind of a finished project I mean you can wear it alone or if you're me you're gonna put the pom-pom on top and I'm probably gonna put the pom-pom on with a snap so when I do that I will come back and show you guys there's that so that is Stronger by Athena Forbes. Again, great pattern, well written. Um, it is a chart because it's color work, just so you guys are aware. Um, but I would highly recommend you doing it. So there's that. All right. One second. Okay, so the next things up on my list to show you guys are my works in progress. And my first work in progress you guys saw last week, and it was a crocheted tummy time rug mouse head with a big red bow on it. Uh, my original plan was to do all the mouse's features as well, like facial features. I have decided not to do that. Mostly because that takes a lot more math and yarn than I was anticipating. Um, so I right now it's in pieces it's big giant circles is all it is they're big giant black crocheted circles I still need to you know sew them together and I need to make the bow still I do have a bow that I actually received as part of a pattern for one of my other um, crocheted rugs that I've made if you guys are curious about those go ahead and look back at past videos and episodes and things like that um, they're really great it the the crocheted rugs that I've been making are really, really great. So go ahead and check those out. But this one is kind of just my own pattern and how to put it together based on her request. Um, and it's going to be really cute. I am actually missing some yarn. So I actually have it on order. It hasn't arrived yet, so I can't finish it. So it's just sitting there. Um, but I didn't think you guys wanted to see giant black circles. So I didn't bring it out. But I do have something else to show you while I'm waiting for the yarn. I went ahead and I started a just a basic shawl with some of the yarn that was in my stash and you now this shawl is going to be the pebble mesh shawl by I actually have it right here by Krista Werble and it's called the pebble mesh lace wrap and scarf I'm sorry wrap and scarf lace wrap and scarf pebble mesh lace wrap and scarf um, it is a great little pattern this is how far I've gotten so far. Whee! Oh, that's the back. Let's try the front. <laughs> so this is how far I've gotten so far. It doesn't look like much. Um, it doesn't even look... So there you guys go. Maybe forward. Um, it doesn't look very long. It's just over a foot long right now. But somebody else um, that I watched, looked at in Rivalry that did this pattern, they basically said, knit until you have, don't have any more yarn. Don't pay attention to the dimension sizes that are currently in the pattern. As to, okay, it's supposed to be 72 inches before you block it, and then it's supposed to be like 80 inches when you're done after blocking it. <laughs> They're like, mine was 60 inches when I got done. And I blocked it, and it turned out to be like 80 inches. Um, so I actually, she goes, I blocked it to 68 inches because she was trying to follow the same methodology. Um, and she goes, the pattern didn't show up very well. She goes, and that, so then I added a couple more inches and I reblocked it and added a couple more inches as I reblocked it. She goes, I wound up reblocking it to about 80 inches and it looked gorgeous and hers did look beautiful. 
just beautiful. Um, I have no idea what this yarn is. It was sitting in my stash. It is a lace weight yarn. Um, it has got some variegated teal blues in it. I'm going to call these tealy blues. Um, sometimes they go as dark as a navy. Other times they're just like a tealy, like a lighter teal blue. Um, it, it's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's a gorgeous yarn. Beautiful. I think there's some like drape to it or a tinsel kind of a, a component to this yarn. I don't have a ball band for it. So I don't know where I got it. I don't remember getting it. It could have inherited it from somebody. I have no idea. So, but so far, I'm really, really, really pleased with it. Um, I have, oh, I have like three quarters of the ball left to go. Um, so it's going to be a decent length. It's going to be, you know, decent length size because it's just over 12 inches right now. And I have three quarters of this thing still to go. Um, so there you guys go. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, it is a four row repeat pattern. So that's kind of nice. But yeah, so there's that. I'm hoping to finish this up as well as finish up the crochet blanket for next time. Um, but who knows? This one I might need a break from because it's so repetitive. It might be one of those things that I just take to local knit nights and things like that. And that's about it. Oh, sliding the pattern back underneath the drink there. So um, because the pattern is so rep repetitive, as I was saying, it's easy to do in company or when I'm watching TV or something like that. So um, I might put it down for a little bit and then pick it back up. I haven't decided. I very rarely do that with my knitting because um, I'm a fairly monogamous knitter, as some of you know, if you guys have watched my intro video. Um, so we'll see. Probably won't put it down or I might not put it down. I might put it down in order to finish the crocheted tummy time rug that I've got. The funny thing is I'm pointing to it like it's like I know where it's at in the house and I'm like, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. I just, I gotta get to it, you know? Um, so when the yarn comes, that does have to come out for, that does have to be finished first, so. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the question and answer portion of the episode. I don't know what JD is doing over here. It just looks really funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Back to what I was saying. The question and answer portion of the podcast or this episode. Wow. It's been a long day already. Um, so I've gotten a couple of questions recently um, from various viewers that are curious about. So I thought I would answer them for everybody. So um, the first question I received from a couple of people that have sent this to me via Ravelry and they were curious as to what my favorite knitting podcasts are. What, what is it that I watch? So I'm going to tell you guys my absolute favorite, and then I will also tell you the one that I started watching most recently that I really, really enjoy. Um, for others, go ahead and check back in previous episodes. <laughs> there are a few more that are actually mentioned. I'm going to let the plane go through. Hopefully. I don't know if you guys can actually hear that. If you guys can, I'm sorry. Um, so if you guys are looking for other things, previous episodes, do name some others that I do watch. Uh, the first one I really enjoy is Fruity Knitting. It is a 90 minute, 90 minute knitting show. Uh, and I like it so much because the people on there are very nice. They're very genuine individuals that, that produce the show. Uh, but also they focus on not just what they're knitting, but what is going on within the knit community as a whole. They interview a lot of pattern designers and yarn makers and dyers and um, just things that have to do with the industry and the animals that help produce a lot of our yarns and how they're produced. And they don't just focus on one area of the world. They they, they go they broaden their scope to the whole world, which is really amazing and it's really inspirational for me. Um, part of the reason why I do this show and I watch other podcasters is for the inspiration to my knitting. Um, and, you know, the funny thing is, is recently I went through a, like, a, where my creativity, I just didn't have it, so I wasn't knitting very much. So if you guys are curious about that, go look at last episode. We're not going to go through it again. But this podcast, I actually, you know, picked up, I watched a couple of their episodes over, you know, a few weeks. And... They, they inspired me again to, you know, just really try something new and try something different and um, to look at the materials that I had and the yarn that I had and try to use it differently than always what I did before. And it, it just what they create or who they in 
the interview and how they create it, um, the knitters around the world that they have on there and what they create is very inspirational to me and inspire me a lot. So I really, really enjoy that particular podcast. It's really well done. I don't always watch it in one sitting as I was saying it because it's very long. Really, really well done. Very long. <laughs> I will tell you that. Um, at least for me. I know some people can just sit down and they have the time to sit there and watch an hour and a half. I don't. Unfortunately, it's not the way my current life situation works. Um, but I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Uh, another one that is a newer podcaster. Uh, she goes by Knitting Traditions. And she only has like six or seven episodes out, I think, right now. And I've started to watch them. And they are really fun. Um, she's a very calming presence, which I really like. And she creates some very beautiful work in earth tones. And I think sometimes I miss some of that in some of my other podcasters that I watch. They like to use very vibrant tones and things like that. And I just had a bug fly in my ear. <laughs> Hazards of, you know, filming outside. Um, so she does some beautiful work in her earth tones. She picks some beautiful earth tone yarns for what she does. And it's just gorgeous to see some of the scenery that is around her as well. So that is very inspiring. So those are my, that is my favorite as well as my newest. Um, there's again, many others in between that I'll pick up episodes for here and there. So by far, they're not the only ones that I watch. Uh, but I thought those kind of would lead some people in the right direction. Um, somebody else asked, what is my favorite thing to knit? Um, I don't really know how to answer that. I don't know if they mean like the favorite you know, do I like to knit garments? Do I like to knit hats? Do I like to knit this? Or do I like to knit lace or cables or color work or whatever? So I'll answer those things in pieces, I guess. Um, I don't have a favorite type of project to knit. So I don't like hats more than garments, more than shawls, more than this, more than that. Um, I have a tendency to knit things that are lighter weight. I don't know if that helps answer some of that question, just because of where I live. Um, if I'm knitting something that's heavier, for example, the hat that I showed you, uh, it is because it typically goes to somebody else <laughs> and they live in colder weather than me. Um, I do enjoy garments. I've gotten more and more into garment making over the last few years compared to when I started. I have made less and less shawls over the, the last year or two. Um, I wear some of them, but then some of them I don't wear. Like the pebble mesh that I've, I'm making now, I'm actually making it for me. Um, it's a little bit more my style. Um, it's nothing, again, I'm getting the face from Jay right now, I'm sorry. Um, it's nothing that is, <laughs> I don't know what he's eating. He's eating leaves off the ground, it's hysterical. He just kind of licks them up and he's like, yum, 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 yum. He's just being funny. Uh, <laughs> So it's definitely more my style. It's not too frilly for me. And that's what I like. And it's also my color palette. So again, I'm knitting it for myself for once. Um, so I, you know, I do enjoy that. I enjoy knitting everything from lace to cables to color work to um, many other things. Like if you wanted to give me straight garter stitch sometimes, I'm all for it. To be honest with you, I like, I like straight garter stitch some days. Um, I like second stitch some days too. <laughs> I have a tendency to like things that are a combination of straight knitting or what I would call like garter stitch or um, stockinette stitch as well as a pattern. So they have portions of both of those things in it. I, I enjoy that stuff. Um, I've gotten, again, I've gotten more into garment making the last couple of years versus just hats, scarves, and shawls. Um, and cowls, I consider cowls to be part of that. Now, that doesn't mean I don't make those things. If you guys have watched any of my episodes, you'll notice I make a ton of those things. Um, but I make other things as well now. So that's kind of nice. Uh, do I enjoy cables versus lace? Um, no. Versus color work? No. I like to do it all. I like the varied variety of it. Um, as you guys can see, I'm making a lace shawl. I just finished a color work hat. I'm planning on making a color work um, stocking for Christmas for a friend. Um, you know, and then I made a, you know, a 
ribbed shirt, basically, a ribbed top, which was really cool. So I enjoy all sorts of things, um, all sorts of patterns and textures. Um, I know some people don't like lace. I like it for the challenge, for the most part. I, I enjoy the challenge of it. So there's that. Um, okay, I hope that answers. Oh, do I like uh, do I like one? Uh, do I like one? I was gonna answer a third part of that. Let's see if I can get this question out. Oh. Do I like one type of yarn over another? Not necessarily. Um, so I, I, I like to use all types of yarns. You know, you guys were seeing, I was using a 50% wool, 50% super fine alpaca. Um, and then I was using 100% bamboo and now I'm using, um, what I think is a silk slash tinsel type of a yarn for a shawl. Um, I use everything. When it comes to garments that, actually I'll finish that off in a few seconds because I'm going to get to the next question. So I hope that answered the question concerning what type of knitting I like to do. I'm not really sure if it did or not. I hope it did. If not, send me the question again and I'll try to answer it again. <laughs> um, some The next question I got a lot is, um, do I prefer knitting with one type of yarn over another? Um, I kind of answered that before. Nope, I will knit with everything. Uh, when it comes to garments or something that I wear, I like the nicer yarns because they have a tendency to be next to my skin. Um, and so therefore I like natural fibers for that. Whether it's cotton, bamboo, um, wool, alpaca, camel, silk, whatever. Um, so I do like the nicer natural yarns in that regard. Um, Am I against acrylics? Not necessarily. Um, I think acrylics have their place. <laughs> and for example, all of my tummy time rugs are made out of acrylic yarn. Most of my baby blankets that I give away to people, um, to friends and family and things like that, I make them out of acrylic. And the reason why is they are easily washable. Um, a kid can throw up on it, toss it in the wash, toss it in the dryer, away you go. Uh, so. That's the only thing I say. Um, I just don't like to wear a lot of acrylic because for me especially, it doesn't breathe. It doesn't have um, the natural qualities that help the animal. It, it Acrylics don't have that. So that kind of stuff. Um, again, I use just about everything from bamboo to wool to alpaca to silk to tinsel. Like it, it, to acrylic. I mean, I use it all. Um, I think they each have their purpose. I think they each have their own um, benefits and drawbacks, no matter which one it is. So I always keep that in mind. So I hope that answered that question. Um, so the last question I have is how do I pick what patterns I'm going to knit or crochet? I don't have a good answer for that. Um, the answer is I pick whatever is inspiring at the time, whatever looks good at the time. Um, when it comes to baby gifts, I pick something that are a little more useful versus those that are not, or at least I try to. It doesn't always happen for me, but I try. Um, when it comes to like certain friends and family, I allow them to choose the like the main topic. Um, for example, the tummy time rug I'm currently making, she's like, "Hey, can you make one that matches matches the baby room?" and you know, she really loves Disney, and so I was like, okay. She goes, how about a mouse head? I said, all right, I think I, I, think I can figure this out. Turns out I can only do the outline. Oh. Um, so that's kind of how, you know, if somebody's like, oh, well, we're doing, you know, we're doing like an ocean theme. So I'm like, okay, so a fish or a whale or a dolphin or something like that. That's kind of how I pick stuff um, for certain projects. When it comes to garments for myself, um, sometimes I pick things that I would want to wear. Sometimes it's just, hey, that pattern looks really interesting. I want to try it. Um, and if it's something that looks really interesting, but I don't really think is my style and I won't actually wear it, I will make it in a different size so I can give it away. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, so there is that kind of stuff. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess that helps. I hope that helps. I never, you know, I don't, I have a list of patterns that inspire me. I have a list of patterns that are favorites on Ravelry and I've got a, you know, a binder and stuff at home, but 
I never really planned too far in advance. You know, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. Upcoming projects, these are what I think I'm gonna do. Doesn't actually always come to fruition. Who knows? So, you know, if, you know, it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But thought process. Um, so those are the questions I thought I would answer for you guys today. Okay, so lastly, I've been asked to give like a, just a little bit of update what's going on besides just my knitting, what's kind of going on in the rest of the world and or rest of my life, I should say. Um, mostly what's what's been happening lately for me is I have been working a lot. Um, my work life consists of up to three jobs at any one time. And so I try to balance things out a little bit. Um, recently, I just needed to, I needed a break recently. So um, not too long ago, about, I think it was last week from when I'm recording this, not when it's coming out. I always keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> I went up to Lynx Lake in Prescott, Arizona. Um, I'll put some pictures on the screen here. Um, it, I don't know what the definition of a lake is. To me, it doesn't look like a lake, um, but to me, a, a lake is like a great lake, like Lake Michigan. Uh, so I don't know. I can't really judge. Uh, all the way around was about, I'm guessing, a four mile loop that my friend and I hiked. Um, and we took our dogs. And so we, we had like, you know, four or five, four, three, four, I'm actually going to say three or four mile hike all the way around. Um, it was great. And we took our camp chairs and we sat out and we just, we just kind of, we just relaxed. It was, it was fantastic. I didn't have knitting. I didn't have a book. I didn't have anything. I just sat there with my dog. It was fantastic. Um, I, I just, I needed to reabsorb nature, I guess is what I call it. Um, I found that in the past, nature calms me. It allows my, it allows things to reset for myself. Um, it takes away my stress. So I went ahead and I did that. So I thought I would share some of these really, really beautiful pictures of Lynx Lake with you guys. Um, so that was really great. So that's mostly what I've been doing lately. Um, besides just knitting when I can, working a lot, playing with my dog. Um, so again, there's not much been going on. So that is everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, everything we had to talk about today. You know, if you ever have any questions, let me know. Um, if you guys, again, are looking for show notes or anything, names of patterns, yarns, designers, things like that, check out the description box below. It's all down there. Um, so is my link to Ravelry. Check that out. Um, I think that's everything for today. So again, this is Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more episodes like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button down there as well. Um, hopefully I will have another yarn review of some kind out there eventually. Um, something like that. Something new, something different. Make no guarantees about anything right now. But... So until next time, everybody, uh, just keep knitting and have a great day. Bye.